Thank you for joining us today in our continuing, ongoing celebration of Earth Day. My name is Michael Schwedek. This is my good friend and much more than wonderful assistant, Mr. David Dean. I know on Earth Day, for myself, it's a time of great reflection. I'm always trying to find out a bigger way, a better way to make a difference. But I'm only a simple human. But together as a community, when we all do something little, it ends up in the right direction. We share our world with so many different kinds of creatures, both great and small. Fish, birds, mammals, insects, reptiles. And today we're going to have the pleasure of sharing with you some beautiful reptiles from all over the world. Almost everywhere we travel, almost everywhere we go, people always ask about the snakes. We know that a snake is a reptile, but did you know more than 3,000 kinds of snakes share our planet Earth? All snakes have teeth, all snakes can bite, but most kinds of snakes are very harmless to people. But when you think about reptiles, please don't forget about the lizards, the turtles, the crocodiles, and their cousins, the alligators. The first reptile we'd like to share with you today is a wonderful turtle. Almost 500 kinds of turtles share our planet Earth. Turtles are always born from eggs, and mother reptiles must lay eggs on the land, never in the water. The turtle we'd like you to meet today is a turtle that hatched from an egg the size of a golf ball. He was super tiny and he was super cute. We used to pick him up in a breakfast spoon. But when this turtle grows up, I won't be able to pick him up. When he grows up, he should weigh a little more than I weigh, but he will never weigh 1,200 pounds. Some turtles do. We named this turtle Chugaluga, but we have always called him Little Alexander. The great big alligator snapping turtle. This is little Alexander. He is real. This is little Alexander. He really is alive. He is a beautiful, very prehistoric looking from the bottom of the mighty Mississippi River where he never lived. Alligator snapping turtle. He's called the alligator snapping turtle because of the size of his head. He's called the alligator snapping turtle because of the size of his beak. A turtle's mouth is called a beak. A turtle's beak is sharp and powerful. Turtles have no teeth. And reptiles can never chew their food. For 10 years we have raised him, but he will never be my pet. He will never know me the way your dog or cat or bird knows you. This morning I was so glad to see him, but he's never glad to see me. And last night I missed him. He never misses me. Reptiles don't feel happiness. They don't feel sadness. That's not why they're called cold-blooded. Maryland has snapping turtles, but not this species. The alligator snapping turtles live in Florida and Georgia, where it's against the law to buy them, sell them, hunt them, kill them, catch them, or keep them. But perhaps this spring or this summer you'll find a large turtle in your backyard that looks like this turtle. Then you can enjoy watching it, take a few pictures, always leaving turtles alone. I think he's a beautiful turtle. I get to see him seven days a week, the holidays too. For 46 years I've been raising his dad, Alexander the Great Big Alligator Snapping Turtle. When I met his dad, a first class stamp was eight cents, a gallon of gas was a quarter, and I still had my hair. We wanted to share with you today a kind of turtle that most people will 
never see free in the wild. I get to see him seven days a week and the holidays too. The more we learn about turtles, the better chance they have of always being a part of the world we live in. And if you check out a book on turtles, books can take us to places we've never been. This is incredible. He's slightly motivated and giving you an early Earth Day celebration swimming type lesson. He is ready for his pool. Turtles are absolutely amazing reptiles. And if you enjoy a glimpse of an alligator snapping turtle, we also brought to share with you today a beautiful 10-year-old Mexican beaded lizard. We know that lizards are reptiles, but can you imagine our planet Earth is the home to more than 6,000 different kinds. Most kinds of lizards do not get big. Most kinds of lizards cannot hurt people. And most kinds of lizards eat the bugs and insects our planet has too many of. For 44 years, I shared this lizard's dad, Pepe. You cannot spend 44 years of your life with a lizard and give it a number. But a few years ago, Mr. David suggested that it would be a nice time to introduce Pepe's handsome son, Pepito. He hatched from an egg that was a little bigger than a big grape. When he hatched, he was as long as a regular crayon. This lizard's family is from the desert. The desert is a very tough, it's a harsh place and environment to live in. Hot and dry every day, and finding a drop of water is not easy. When you take a good look at Pepito, just like little Alexander, well, unlike little Alexander, this lizard is adult in size. He's not going to get bigger. And it's true, he cannot hang by his tail. He cannot change his colors to hide or blend or camouflage. His tongue is not sticky for catching bugs and insects. What is true is that he could go half a year without a drink of water. Almost everything we eat is water, even pretzels and crackers and cookies and cake. And most of the water he needs, he will get from the eggs he eats. Beaded lizards eat a lot of eggs. Turtle, lizard, bird, and snake eggs, too. And it is true. If Pepito lost his legs, he could look like a snake. Lizards have ears. Snakes do not. Lizards can close their eyes. The snakes cannot. We know that the snakes have to sleep with their eyes open. Last week, a fifth grader asked me if she could hold Pepito. I told her I would love to let you hold him. But frightened reptiles move with alarming speed. If I accidentally frighten Pepito and he tries to bite me, the way I hold him, he can't reach me and I can't hurt him. Sometimes people forget reptiles always wild animals. They don't know right from wrong. They don't know right from left. I think reptiles want food to eat, water to drink, and never be eaten. When you go to the park this summer, you might watch a lizard go under a rock. And if you're at the beach, a lizard could fall asleep on your toes. But if the lizard is as long as a pencil, that is a full-grown American lizard. And if you see a lizard that looks like this lizard in your yard, it means your yard is Mexico. He is a beautiful Mexican beaded lizard. The turtles are reptiles. 
Lizards are reptiles too. But with almost 500 different kinds of turtles, with more than 6,000 different kinds of lizards, how did it happen that only two kinds of alligators share our planet Earth? and 14 kinds of crocodiles. Crocodiles and alligators grow to be the world's largest reptiles, not the longest, they weigh the most. Mother alligators and mother crocodiles are considered to be the best mother reptiles. And it's true, crocodiles and alligators are considered to be the smartest reptiles. Only two kinds of alligators share our planet Earth. American, the kind that live in Florida, and Chinese, the kind that live in China. Today you're going to meet a very beautiful, a five-year-old American alligator. We named this alligator after our favorite lake in Florida. His name is Okeechobee. When Okeechobee hatched, his head was smaller than my thumb. When he hatched, he was as long as a hot dog. His first dinner was a fish smaller than a penny. And five years ago, he could run around in a kindergartner's empty shoebox. But 35 years ago, I used to bring his dad to schools. When his dad was five, I could hold his dad in my hands. But now I weigh less than his dad's tail. His mom is big and his dad is big. And one day he will be big. He is a beautiful American alligator. He is real. He is alive. If we put him near his mom or dad, he looks tiny. But if we put him near a baby alligator, a hatchling alligator, he looks big, and we can never do this because big alligators eat medium and medium alligators eat small. Alligators eat fish, they catch birds, they will eat the snakes. And when a reptile eats an animal with something called rabies, those rabies are gone. Reptiles help to stop the spread of rabies and disease. Boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, if you spend this summer looking in every river and lake and pond in Maryland, you won't see an alligator. They don't call Maryland home. Our winters get too cold. But they don't just live in Florida. Maybe today someone in North Carolina will have to stop the car because there's an alligator crossing the road. And maybe today in East Texas, somebody won't go swimming because there's an alligator in their pool again. They don't just live in Florida, but they don't live everywhere in the wilds of America. He can stay so still, he doesn't look real. When he needs to move, it is unreal. He swims with his tail. If his life is in danger, he can swing his tail. But it's not his tail we must be careful of. Okeechobee has so many teeth. He has teeth to catch a dinner. He has teeth to make sure he doesn't become a dinner. He has teeth to make a big dinner little. It's always about dinner. All of a sudden, Okeechobee was just slightly motivated. He wasn't trying to hit Mr. David. He's not hurting Mr. David. He can stay so still. Can you imagine Okeechobee floating in a lake with only his eyes and his ears and his nostrils and his back peekabooing out of the water? And when green plants grow on his back, he looks like a floating log. Because reptiles are cold-blooded, they can go months without eating. And Okeechobee can wait for a dinner to come to him. But when he's floating in the water, when a fish jumps, or when a bird lands, or when a snake swims by, hungry alligators move so quickly. How many alligators live just in Florida? 
It's hard to believe. 1.3 million or a lot. And I know you might not believe this, but in one year, how many people visit Florida? About 90 million. Florida has a lot of people that live there, residents. Florida has a lot of visitors. Florida has a lot of mosquitoes. Florida has a lot of alligators. Yet alligators almost never eat people. They get big enough to. 50 years ago, America's alligators were almost gone. They were almost extinct. You might not believe this, but in 100 years, 5 million American alligators were killed for their skin. People all over the world wanted alligator skin, and the only place you could get it was America. But around 1970, that stopped. People had to leave them alone. People did, and now they are back. Some people in Florida say there's still too many alligators. Some people in Florida have said there's too many people. But the people that know the most about alligators, the alligator biologists will tell you, alligators don't have the room they used to have. There are more roads, airports, highways, and malls. 50 years ago, they were almost gone. And yes, now they are back because of conservation, education, and law enforcement. He's a beautiful American alligator. He will never be this little again. His dad weighs about 400 pounds. If you think that's big, can you imagine? Okeechobee weighing 400 pounds. But can you imagine an African Nile crocodile weighing almost a ton? A big crocodile makes a big alligator look little. It was a little more than 50 years ago when I got up in front of people and talked about reptiles. Right here in Maryland at Crossroad High School. I was terrified. I didn't even know it then, but I was combining the fear of public speaking with the fear of snakes. I'm not sure that's a thing. I wouldn't know what it's called. But I have to tell you that at the end of that day, after sharing beautiful snakes with five different audiences, I felt wonderful. And I think I did, because while I was trying to find my voice, I realized that reptiles have none. Reptiles might be the very most misunderstood of all creatures. And reptiles, especially snakes, there are so many snake stories. I love when people share them with me. But these stories are called lore. And it's true, there's a lot of lore about bats and about wolves. But when it comes to snakes, we brought a beautiful snake to share with you today. Some snakes eat mice and some snakes eat rats. Some snakes eat snakes and some snakes eat bats. Some snakes live on the ground. Some snakes live underground. Some snakes live in the trees. Some snakes live in the seas. We hatch snakes that are so small that they are born, they can curl up on a quarter. You have to be little to curl up on a quarter. We hatch snakes that when they are born, they are so small, we need a mouse to feed them, smaller than a gummy bear, a one day old mouse. Isn't it interesting? With more than 3,000 different kinds of snakes sharing our planet Earth, most kinds of snakes are harmless. Depending on 
where you live. Maryland is the home to two kinds of venomous snakes, but Southern Maryland is the home to only one kind. Some snakes kill their food, their prey, by squeezing. Those snakes are called constrictors, but some snakes kill their food, their prey, with venom. If you find a snake in your yard, if you see a snake in a park, if you're by yourself and you find a snake, if you're with your friends, I would be so proud of you if you enjoy watching the snake while you're moving away. When you're finished, you can walk. You don't have to run. You can tell an older person. But please never, ever touch a snake you find. Do you know what most snakes do? When they see you getting near and then you move away and leave them alone, go down a hole under a rock, up the tree, into the creek, then go under your shed. If we leave snakes alone, they will usually leave us alone. But when a person is bitten by a snake and they go to the hospital, do you know what doctors like to ask first? It's what they always ask me first. How did this happen? Well, in the United States, the easiest way to be bitten by a snake in the wild is trying to catch it. It's trying to kill it. Is accidentally stepping on it or stepping near it. In the United States each year, very few people die from venomous snake bite. But venomous snake bite is something that no one really ever wants to experience. And although I've been bitten a few times by venomous snakes, I'm only bitten when I make a careless mistake. I've learned a lot from my mistakes, and so have the wonderful Johns Hopkins doctors that have always helped me. The snake in this box is seven years old, and this is the egg he hatched from. It doesn't even look like an egg. It's empty. This is basically as big as a snake egg can be. And how does a snake get out of an egg? They grow an egg tooth, and they cut through the shell. If you ever find a snake egg, snake eggs are very soft and leathery. So when we handle snake eggs, we're super careful, because it's easy to dent a snake egg. Only four kinds of snakes really grow to be truly giant snakes. Remember last summer? An older person called Mr. David to tell him there was a giant snake in her yard. And she asked Mr. David if he could come to her yard to try to move it to the woods. And Mr. David said he would. And Mr. David went to this person's yard and in about 20 minutes found the snake hiding in the yard. And because the yard wasn't big and there were so many roads and homes nearby, Mr. David was going to move it back to the woods where it wouldn't cause this person to be so frightened or whether the snake could be injured crossing the street. But after returning the snake to the woods, Mr. David came back. And this nice lady thanked him. But then Mr. David said, but where's the really big snake, do you think? And the lady said to Mr. David, well, uh, that was the one you found. <laughs> well, it was a young adult garter snake. It really wasn't very big. But to her, it was. We'd like to share with you this afternoon a kind of snake that usually calls home a big part of the world, Southeast Asia, Indonesia. We brought a python to share with you today. Now, when you hear the word python, most kinds of pythons really don't get big, but three kinds do. When you hear the word python, your brain might be saying to you, that's a snake that kills its prey by squeezing. So it is a snake 
that is non-venomous. You know, all of the snakes have teeth, but it's the venomous snakes that have empty, hollow teeth called fangs. A fang is a tooth, but not every tooth is a fang. A fang is a hollow. It is a specialized tooth that venom travels through. It's hard to believe that this snake has an older sister. Her name is Banana Girl. I used to bring Banana Girl to schools in the 1980s. I shared Banana Girl for eight years. But one morning, I could not pick her up because she had grown up. Some reptiles get so big, there is a day when we don't share them. When I stopped bringing Banana Girl to schools, I brought her little sister, Banana Peel. And when Banana Peel grew up and I couldn't pick her up, I brought her handsome young brother, Banana Boy. I miss sharing Banana Girl. I miss sharing Banana Peel. I miss sharing Banana Boy. But today, you are meeting Banana Boy's brother. He is Banana Boy's brother, and his name is Banana Boy's brother. But we like to save time. We call him Triple B. He's a little more than 16 feet long. He weighs a little more than 100 pounds. Just because he's big, this doesn't mean he can't move fast. This is a snake that, in the wild, would kill its prey by squeezing. And it's true. If you watched him strike, open his mouth, catch a wild pig completely by surprise, hold it with his teeth, and wrap his body around it four times if you blinked, you missed it, and then the squeezing begins. Almost eight years ago, this snake could coil on the palm of my hand. When he hatched, he was 18 inches long. That's huge for a newborn snake. And the bigger he gets, the bigger his dinners will be. We don't feed our reptiles live animals. We don't need to. When we feed him an animal, it's not alive. But if he lived in Vietnam, if he lived in Indonesia, in the jungle, there would be no one there to feed him. He would only get dinner if he could catch dinner. I mentioned a moment ago, Pythons live in Africa and Asia in the wild. But if you have been following in the news, this is the species of python that now calls home South Florida. It really is true. This is the kind of python that now lives in the wilds and in areas not so wild in South Florida. And it's a long story as to how they arrived in America. And it is a problem. These snakes get big. They have an amazing appetite. But the animals they are eating are animals that the wildlife in South Florida is so dependent upon. So many kinds of animals eat rodents like mice and rats and moles and voles and shrews from fish to birds of prey. And it's true, although if you're visiting South Florida and you see a Burmese python in the wild, it probably won't be yellow and white with pink eyes. This snake should be the most beautiful brownish black mahogany color. It's true, if this snake is on the ground, on top of the leaf litter, all of the leaves that have fallen and changed colors. You could walk right past the snake in the wild and not even know that he's there. Of course, one of the ways reptiles and snakes especially are so successful in nature is to not be seen. But it is true, these snakes now call home South Florida. And it will be interesting as the years go by, to see how well 
they thrive and they survive. There's great evidence that they are going to. But one thing we know is that when alligators live in areas where there's a high population of snakes, up to half of what they eat are snakes. And nobody really knows how many of these snakes now call home Florida, but with 1.3 million American alligators, we know that the alligators will help to control their population in the wild. You have been such a wonderful, wonderful audience. And I know Mr. Michael was supposed to stop talking a really long time ago. But we wait all year long to bring Reptile World to Leonard Town. We always love to visit St. Mary's County. And we love to share these reptiles with ladies and gentlemen, with boys and girls. If you enjoyed this program, you would never have to say thank you. Because you've been saying thank you the nicest way, by the way, you've been watching and listening. We really hope you enjoyed Reptile World. We hope you learned a little more about the world we live in. And even during these difficult times, around the corner it will be a different day. And certainly our thoughts and prayers and hopes go out to all of the people that have lost family members during this difficult time, to all of the people that are suffering with the virus. We send our greatest appreciation to the medical community and our wonderful military who's working so hard to make a difference. Uh, thank you for having us, and we certainly look forward to seeing you at Earth Day next year again. Take care. Be safe.